Let's learn now how to use a multi-timbral software instrument like Contact in Logic Pro. In order to take full advantage of the multi-output of the instrument and also so that is set up uh, in the most flexible way and most productive way we can. So the first thing I'm going to do is of course to start a new project and on an instrument track I'm going to insert an instance of contact. Let's make sure that when you insert the instance, it's already set up as 16 stereo output because we're going to use all these different outputs later. Once I have my instance here, I'm going to load some instruments. Let's say I'm going to uh, load three instruments. So I have my three instruments loaded right here and they are on three different MIDI channels. So how can I access this instrument separately from inside Logic? And the way I really like to do it so that I get the most flexible setup possible is to start creating a multi-instrument object in the environment. So first thing I'm going to open the environment which is sort of like looking in the back of your Logic Studio where we can see all the inputs and outputs of all the different objects and devices that we have available. So I'm going to just press Command 0 that opens up the environment and as you can see here I am on the mixer layer. You have different layers in the environment it's just a way to organize all the different objects so it's easier to group them and, and working on them. So I'm going to stick to the mixer layer and here, as you can see, this looks a little bit like a mixing board. And I'm going to see my contact multi-instrument right here. This is the one that I just inserted here on my channel strip. So the first thing I want to do is to add extra MIDI input and output to this instance of contact. And to do so, I'm going to go to New. And I'm going to select Multi-Instrument. I'm going to tap there and a new object has been inserted. I'm going to drag it here so it's a little bit closer to my channel strip because the next step is to drag the small virtual cable there and bring it to my contact instrument. A box will pop up saying cables and channels port are set. Just click remove. So now we basically created 16 virtual MIDI ports that can tap into my instance of contact. It's a default logic um, mutes them all so you just need to check them all so that they become active. And it's important that you give a name to this instrument and you can do it right here. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be K1 instance. So I can identify it later. Now I can close the environment. I'm done here. It's a good idea also to name the channel here. So I'm going to call it K1. So I know it's a, my first instance of contact. And now how do I send data, MIDI data to those instruments? It's very simple. I'm going to create a new track but this time I'm going to create an external MIDI track. These are just regular MIDI track, old-fashioned MIDI tracks that I would use with an external synthesizer for example. I'm going to tap create and as a default because Logic is smart he actually set the output of the new MIDI track to the first channel of my K1. If I want to double check that that's correct just right click right here on the track name, select reassign track, go to the mixer layer of the environment, and you're going to see the K1 instance that we created, my multi timbral instrument, and it's set to channel 1. So now when I hit a note, the MIDI 
from the keyboard goes to this track and is sent to channel one of my K1 instance right here. Now, what about if I want to access the second mini channel, the second part here? Very simple. I can just duplicate this track and I'm going to assign it now to mixer K1 but channel 2. And if I want to access the third one, I can just do it the same way. So now I can access all three instruments and the advantage is that my volume here controls directly the volume of each instrument separately. So if I move my volume here, I can see it just changing right here. And same thing happens for the pan. So I can easily just control the volume and pan directly from these channels. When you create a, a multi-instrument in Logic, that's a problem. And that, that's something that really drives me nuts. <laughs> so I like to do it this way, even if it's a little more convoluted, but it gives you way more control over each instrument. In order for this to work, you have to make sure that each individual instrument in your instance of contact receives on a different MIDI channel. So you can go up here where it says MIDI channel and you can tap there and make sure that the first instrument receives on channel 1, the second one on channel 2, the third one on channel 3, and so on. You can set up automatically in contact so that every time you create a new instrument, it moves a channel up, and so it's automatically done. You also need to check that the track that holds the original instant of contact has the MIDI channel set to all. Sometimes as a default, it starts on channel 1 and that would, would not work. So you need to make sure that the MIDI channel of the track that hosts the instance of contact is set to MIDI channel all. So now when I go to my first track here, I'm going to hear this instrument. When I move to this track, I'm going to hear this instrument. And when I go to the third track, I'm going to hear this instrument. And again, I have individual control over the volume and pan of each instrument. This volume controls instrument 1, this volume controls instrument 2, and this the volume of instrument 3. I created also two more tracks that I'm going to assign to channel 4 and channel 5. And one thing I want to show you is that using this system is very easy to layer sounds. So for example, let's say that I want to add a piano. That's a new instrument that is on channel MIDI channel 4. And I want to layer it with a vintage organ. So if I want to layer these two instruments, the only thing I need to do is to make sure that they receive on the same MIDI channel. So in this case, I can assign both to number 4. And now when I record on this track, they will both receive the same MIDI information. So it's very easy to do layers. And that's another good reason to use this system. Now what about having separate effects on each instrument? It's very easy to do using the multiple outputs that Contact has available. This is the standard multi-output setup that Contact has, but we can change it. As you can see, as a default, it has a stereo output called stereo 1, another stereo output called stereo 2, and then it has a surround system. So I'm going to delete the surround system. I'm just going to tap right there and select it so it is highlighted. And then here, I'm going to use the minus key to delete that output. 
Now I'm going to create two more. I'm going to tap there. So I created a new output that at the moment is called stereo 3, but it has no real output. So to assign a real output, I'm simply going to tap there and I'm going to assign this two to the next output available. So I have one, two already used, three and four already used. So I'm going to select this one and this one. And by clicking OK, as you can see now, it was assigned to five and six. So I have one, two, three, four, five and six. I'm going to create one more. I'm going to connect it right there. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I can rename this here manually. What I find useful sometimes is to use some of the batch categories here. And they can be named automatically depending on the instrument that is sent to them. So how do I send an instrument to each individual output? It's very simple. Right here above the MIDI channel there's an output option and the first one is automatically sent to output one but I can choose my second instrument and say this is gonna go to output two which is really again three and four and now for my third instrument I can say that I want it to be sent to stereo three and now for my piano and organ, it's up to me, but if I want to treat them as a as one instrument, since I'm layering them, I'm going to send them to output 4. So now, if I select the first instrument, that's going to be using the usual 1 and 2. Now, how do I bring those outputs, though? inside logic because at the moment the only real output that I have is one and two so I'm going to open my mixing board and because I've chosen an instance of contact that has 16 stereo output now I have this plus button here that allows me to add extra aux channels that are linked to the outputs of contact so if I tap here I'm going to create three more auxes that take the input from the output of contact. It's really great, right? Of course I can rename those. Maybe I call them K1, 3, 4. K1, 5 and 6. And and finally K1, 7 and 8. So it's good to keep some consistencies in naming all these things because it can get a little bit confusing. So now I can insert different effects on each different instrument coming out of contact and I can use all the automation options also available in Logic for each different instrument. So I hope you find this tutorial useful and again, it's just to have a better environment to write and be creative. Happy recording.